Let's welcome warmly a great coach, a great leader, Todd Kennett. I'm really emotional, so this is going to be really hard. Um, Bob Staley, a couple minutes ago, said, what do you think of it? And I said, it's pretty hard and pretty humbling to be given or going to be given the keys to possibly the best facility in the world in terms of rolling that I've ever seen or had the honor of being in. There may be something better. I don't know of it. Um, so I'm, I'm absolutely stunned. Andy started rattling off a lot of thank yous, but uh, my base thank you is to everybody that's standing there because all of your support made it happen. Whether you were a 3V rower that pushed a JV rower that made a varsity rower go faster and win a championship, uh, or whether you gave a huge monetary gift, or if you had some thoughts on how we build this, or you're one of the probably dozen coaches that are standing out there, all of you formed the tradition of Cornell rowing back to when it first started uh, in 18... What is 74, maybe 72? Somebody has to test my history. Um, but it's, it's that tradition. You're the tradition. And hopefully this new boathouse will be able to hold some of that tradition and display it to anybody that walks in and bring several things, more things to the, to the, to the table that we are allowed then to take steps forward and go onward with. I have a couple quick thank yous I, I have to give out. And the first one is to my wife. Um, it's been a trying year for certain in terms of the amount of time I've been down here and she's held me together so many times I can't even begin to uh, say so thank you Jessa um, Andy already said a huge thank you to Bob Staley but at one point I have to go back. This has been, I've been in, involved in this process for 12 years. We had a whole uh, uh, design at one point set. Uh, and as we went into that and it failed, we tried again. And as we're trying again, it was at a point where no construction was allowed. We didn't have the, the money at the point, at one point. And Bob kept coming up and saying, Todd, we're going to get this done. And I'd be like, okay, what do you want me to do? And he'd give me, you know, some ideas, something like that. But I, he'd walk away, and I'd think to myself, there is no way. I don't know what he's on, but I need some of it. And that optimism so often would leave me like, all right, if he's going to go for it, I'm going to go for it. It's sort of the same thing you do as in you're in the middle of a rowing race, and the going's getting tough. And you know if the, that your pair partner's going, you have to go too. And that's the way I felt, and I can't thank enough for the optimism that he showed throughout the time in the course. Um, some of these people, but I have to reiterate, uh, and I have a line of what I call my bosses. And my first boss, who's the highest in the hierarchy, and I probably only get to really talk business with probably once or twice a year, would be Susan Murphy. He already said thank you. But several times this year, we came up against roadblocks, and it was like we were going crazy trying to figure out things to do. And all of a sudden, she'd be coming in, you know, full charging, all this energy, here's how you do it, da 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 da, -da. and she'd go off to save some other part of campus. And it was just so reassuring to know we had this kind of backing. So I can't, you know, Andy may have said thank you, but I'm saying thank you again. is to Andy Noel himself. As, as many times as he's thanking everybody else, very few people say thank you to him. There was a number of times where he was very adamant, this needs to be done right. We're not going to do this sort of, you know, just throw something up and get it. He wanted it done right. And it was his continuing to prod that allowed this to go on. It was him continuing to go to everybody and say, this is why it needs to happen, that it did help happen. So thank you, Andy. said thank you to Anita. Anita, who got me into coaching, kept me in coaching, keeps me on a straight path and, and sort of straightens out my political blunders. Uh, she's uh, a, a huge thank you to her on that one. And then the final one, and this is something that a lot of people don't see, is, is I have a great staff. And some of them I get to introduce, some I don't. One of the people that I really picked up a ton for me was uh, Matt Smith, my freshman coach. Um, as I was caught up in, in so many meetings and stuff, if you knew Matt, I feel like he's more my boss than he is somebody that works for me. He's a, a, an Iraqi war veteran, decorated, uh, a, an Olympian, uh, and just a great guy. And he's shown me so much about coaching. And, and he's so many times this year, I come in like frazzled and, and needed to get something done, and it was done already. And I was like, holy smokes, he, he, you know, he has ESP uh, uh, telepathy over there. So thank you, Matt. I appreciate your effort.
two things that this building is really going to set us forward with that, that really is, are going to affect us. One is, uh, uh, there was an alumnus here a, a couple, I, well, it was almost a year ago. We broke ground a year ago, and he was here actually before that. So last year and a couple months before, this alumnus was walking around. He's like, Todd, you know what this boathouse is missing? I'm like, a couple things. And he goes, bling. I'm like, bling? What's bling? I'm an old dinosaur. I have no idea what bling is. Well, in new modern days, all these kids have their cell phones, and they put all these little grommets on there and diamonds and stuff like that. That's called bling. And I'm like, well, what do you mean by bling? And he looks at me and goes, it needs some spark, some fire, some just wow factor as you walk in. And, well, I hope when you walk in there today, you feel the wow factor. Uh, I can say this. My first recruit walked through yesterday and he and his mom walked through, and they got down to the bottom of the stairs, and, and uh, I look at him and say, what do you think? And he looks at me and goes, wow. <laughs> and I'm like, well, let me ask you this. After you saw this facility, do you see any reason you would, if you're really serious about rowing, you would go anywhere else? And he just shook his head and said, no. I'm like, well, we built it. <laughs> thing, and, and this is becoming more and more apparent every year, and this year was really apparent. If you looked at the top, for the heavyweight men especially, if you look at the top finishers, Cal, Washington, Harvard, those three at the IRA this year, um, Columbia is going this way, Princeton, Yale, the international recruiting scene, across the, it's no longer across the country, it's across the world. One of the things that we're fighting is as they bring these kids in and make it now, you know, some of these kids are not kids. They're Olympians, they're national teamers for, from other countries, and now they're rowing in freshman boats or filling in varsities. People are saying, well, what are you going to do? How are you going to get those kids? And I'm like, oh, maybe we get a few here and there. But one thing is those kids, quote unquote Olympians, they're people. That means they just have more muscle, they have taken more strokes. One thing that this facility will allow us to do, and when you walk upstairs into that workout room and you see the amount of workout things that are in there, the weights and all, it'll allow us to do more, which means we can make more muscle. If we make more muscle, we become more competitive, and as we become more competitive, we'll get better recruits, we'll have the wow factor, so now we're a step ahead, and the next thing you know, we're playing the game. And that's, to me, the, the step we need to take, and thank you so much for all your support in allowing this to happen. Thank you.